Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming again. I have got to try to get at least one video ahead. If I can, I can stay in my campsite and use my slow internet to upload a video where it takes about eight hours. And what have I got here? I don't know who that is. I've still got Wi-Fi and it's trying to tell me to answer the phone. I'll have to wait for them to leave a message. It's a local area code, but I don't know. I've had this phone forever and the number forever. I'm contemplating changing it, but I'll just keep blocking calls until I don't get any more that I don't want to deal with. My car warranty, I get those all the time. I've had my car for since 2008, so I get a lot of car warranty stuff. Insurance, you know, whatever, it's that time of year. Anyhow, getting back to my subject. I'm going to recommend some, some ideas here, but I don't want you going and checking them out. I just want to let you know that there are people who have studied the human mind and body and they've come up with ways to improve it from an earthly point of view. Now, we're supposed to be spiritually upgrading. But people who've studied it, studied everything from the earth side, have produced people that can do things that seem extraordinary. But it's because they've learned some of the secrets. And the same secrets are covered in the Bible, but we don't seem to listen to those for some reason. Oh, I've got an armadillo up here. I might stop this long enough to try to film some of him, but... I had some in the last video too. Let's see how close I can get. He's about 40 feet away in front of me. Maybe I can back up towards him and keep me in the frame. I have to turn around, I have to back up so I can keep me in the frame. If I stop it, you won't know how close he was. Okay, let's see if I can find him. There he is. So he's pretty close. I got my arm extended so you can see him. They are everywhere here. There's just so many of them that at night they sometimes wake me up. Okay, I used to live in Southern California. Back in the, I don't know, if I want to call it the good old days. It's the bad old days now out there. I don't recommend California to anybody. A few of my friends live out there and from, from here and, and other ones. That uh, It's getting really bad. My son moved away, fortunately, because he was in San Francisco, and he said it just got too bad to live there. And he lived there for a number of years. I've lived there <clears throat> back in the good old days. But I've lived in... Santa Monica, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach. Now, when I lived in Hermosa Beach, I would run up and down the Strand. That's the little walkway you can ride bikes on, roller skate, or just walk on. Um, typically, you walk off the side a little bit so you don't get run over by those crazy skateboarders or roller skates. And I would go past Muscle Beach. And as I look at the people there, and I go different times of the day, depends on when I was working and when I wasn't. And at any given time, there was somebody there. At times, there were two or three. At other times, there might be 30 or 40. And I saw that over a period of time, and I saw the people that were there. When there were two or three, I know who those people were. Schwarzenegger. The Hulk, Lou Ferrigno, people that were there longer when it was harder. You're not showing off as, for as many people. It's actually harder when there's nobody there. You're doing it by yourself. They succeeded. The lesson is, if you want something bad enough, go for it. If you don't think you can do it, then you're absolutely right. You can't. 
But when you get it in your head that you can do it, it's called faith. Do you truly have faith? If you do, you can do anything. I've used this many times, but Peter walked on water until he took his eyes off of Jesus. You can do anything you want to do, but you've got to set your mind to it. You've got to make it your highest priority. You've got to skip meals, skip getting together with friends. Some geeks that have become billionaires did so because they were geeks and they didn't, didn't relate to their peers very well. So they weren't out partying every weekend. They were home teaching themselves or learning how to do something. I'm going to sit down on my bench here. Ah. There's a religious organization, and I use that term loosely because, frankly, they shouldn't be. It's called Scientology. It's, it teaches you how to have confidence. Now, it's an expensive lesson. They basically want all your money. That's what they're there for. But if you look at someone like Tom Cruise and you look at what he's achieved as far as work, he's done an awful lot. And he's definitely into them, and I'm sure they love how much money he gives them. I don't know if he's single-handedly keeping them afloat, but there's enough people out there to believe that baloney that I'm sure they're making a, a good fortune off of it. But they teach you. Um, when I was in the Navy, is my first acquaintance with somebody in, into Scientology. And I am very, very grateful to them for what they did. They made this individual sell everything he had to me to give him money. I got my motorcycle, my first stereo system, all kinds of other things I got from him that he was willing to sell me. If somebody's from Scientology and wants you to be part of it, run. You won't be able to argue with them. They've been trained by professionals to argue, to win their arguments. But the bottom line that I want you to understand is these people are motivated by this, quote, fake religion to be number one. You want to get to number one? This is what you got to do. You got to see it in your, in your mind. There's churches along that line. Well, you got to have positive thinking. Well, they're absolutely right. But where does the power come from? The fake religions say the power comes from you. Technically, it does, because it comes from within you if you've got the Spirit of God within you. But you got to turn that power on, and the way you turn that on is you turn off sin. And then you go to God and say, I'm ready, I'm ready to do whatever you want me to do. That's hard. Most of us have sin natures that we can't fight very well. But we're not alone. Our founding fathers had sin natures too, and look what they achieved. Moses stood up to Pharaoh and got the, a million plus people out of Egypt. God did all the rest. <clears throat> he got them across a dry riverbed, but God gets split the waters. Of course, he had to be obedient raise his staff up, and when he couldn't, they had help to help keep that staff up. It's called belief. you got to keep feeding that belief that God will do it for you if you believe in him. Uh, I'm smelling I'm smelling the water that you, like you can smell when you're down at the ocean. Only it's, there's the river right here. The humidity is enormous. You can see the fog behind me. It's just stopped raining, and it's almost five o'clock, and I made my, my video this morning. I recorded it about 8.30. I got it uploaded. I went into town and got it uploaded. I'm having trouble trying to get things uploaded from where I'm at by doing things next day. If I record it in the morning, it takes me a good eight hours to get it uploaded, and sometimes it fails. One out of seven or eight times it fails, and then it has to start all over. 
in order for it to be ready for you in the morning at 6 a.m. I then have to start it and go to sleep, set my alarm for 5 so that I can finish it off. If it stays connected and I don't lose it, I can sometimes do some of the work. Uh, in order to upload a file on YouTube, you go to the upload section, you click on the file, you click upload. <clears throat> You only get to put like three or four things in. You can put a, a title, a description, and the playlist. And that's it. Then it uploads. Once it's uploaded and it's available, then I can go back in. I can tweak the title. I can, I can tweak the description. I always add my uh, how to support this ministry stuff down below that. Uh, if you don't know where that's at, just look at the description. I've got to tell it whether to monetize it or not. I've started using a couple of features that they've come out now telling it not to put a video in the body of the video and I'm hearing that it's working. It didn't work for a while so if that's working that's great you won't see as many many commercials. I'm trying that also with the shorts. I did that one short to test it. Um, the shorts won't be monetized until uh, February of this year so I got a couple of weeks. Anyhow, the purpose of this video is to tell you, you've got to really, truly believe. Now, I can give you, I don't know the Bible verse off the top of my head, which one is it? It, 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 it Paul's talking, he goes, I believe, but help my unbelief. You can look that up later if you want. The bottom line is, we're all going to have some doubt. We're going to have some doubt. I've talked about people on, on stage. There's a little bit of stage fright for everybody. I don't care how long you've been doing it. That's okay. That's healthy. That means you're conscious and thinking about what you're going to be doing, going over and checking everything in your head. But you still go out there, and that's the thing. So whatever we have in our life to do here, I keep bouncing around because it's shaking on my knee. Let me see if I can get this on the ground. There's no wind. It's just dead. We had rain all day, but it was not uh, bad rain. It was not uh, bad storms. Okay, if I put this down, I'm going to have to point the camera up. Okay, that's, that's what I can do. I'll stop, I'll stop shaking the camera that way. But you have got to get out there. If it means reading the same 10 inspirational Bible verses every day, 10 times, 100 times a day, whatever it takes, to build that confidence in you that you can go forward with it. Do you think these guys back then knew how to do this? The Spirit will work you through it. They were looking, the, the leaders of the time were looking at the disciples going, how can, how can these guys talk like this? Aren't they fishermen or farmers? If they're talking very knowledgeable, very sophisticated. The Spirit was doing it. The Spirit's going to do most of the work. You just have to be there and available. And that's the key. But you've got to give it the power, and that is the faith. If you don't have the faith that God can do what he says he's going to do, nothing's going to happen. You need to have that power from God going through you because you believe it's going to go through you. Now, some of this is confidence. Some of this is doing it one time and succeeding. Edison said once, I didn't just fail a hundred times. I found a hundred ways it didn't work. That's confidence. That's why he was successful. You listen to Elon Musk. He's not a, um, a genius per se. He's wealthy because he has confidence. I don't think he's a product of any of these mind-controlling churches or whatever. I think he just was born with this confidence that he could do anything. And he's smart, though. I don't know if he's genius level. I don't know what his level is, but he, he knows what he's doing. And he knows what doesn't work. He got his car going, 
his electric car going because he knew what they had tried and what didn't work, and he made it work. He gets, he finds good people, and he puts the best in there. He's in space for that same confidence. Whether he's the richest man in the world, that's debatable. We don't really know exactly how much the Middle Eastern sheikhs and everybody, they don't have to disclose their money and their their money is tied up in their government, which they run so heartily. So how much money do they really have? They could be the richest people in the world. But right now, the harlot and her collaboration, that's their greatest amount of money. These people are there because they believe in what they're doing. The bad people that are ruining this world believe in what they're doing, and that's why they're ruining this world. They believe in what they're doing more than Christians do on this planet, and that's sad. That's why they're winning. Now, they've got the greatest ego, egomaniac out there, and that's Satan, you know, egging them on. They don't have the spirit of God in them, they, and they really don't even have the spirit of Satan in them necessarily. They have demons, and the demons went to school and learned how to be like Satan. But they have a confidence that's inherited from Satan. Now, we don't have a chance, personally, without the spirit, to go up against Satan in any way, shape, or form. We'd be annihilated. We saw a few times in the New Testament where they tried to cast out demons and got chased away. In one particular case, Jesus said that type can only be dealt with with much fasting and praying. Or praying and fasting. Those two always go together. You want the power of God to be able to work out of you? Fasting and praying. I pray a lot, but I don't fast enough. Because I have health issues with my gut. Sometimes it's I try, and then it starts bothering me, and I can't. But I can do a lot of short fasts. I just can't do a long fast. It's like my dad used to say when he was smoking, and people asked him, haven't you quit smoking? Yeah, every day. Yeah, well, if that's the best you can do, then you do that. You quit eating, you fast, you skip one meal. If I skip a meal, my best meal to skip, frankly, is dinner. I have a reasonable breakfast, a big, hearty lunch, and then don't eat dinner. At that, I can lose weight as long as I'm active. Today would have been a little bit hard to do that because I was cooped up in my, in my tent too long. I did drive into town to finish getting my video uploaded. But I'm doing this one on the same day that I did my last one so that I have all day tomorrow to get it uploaded. And I can do that. So, you you know, there are challenges in doing everything. You just get out there and do them. If it's getting you down because you're fighting something, stop fighting it. Just go with the flow. Stay with God. Don't give up on God. God's not going to give up on you. I'm getting so many, I'm getting a lot of new people, and boy, I don't know where these, where they've learned the Bible, but they didn't learn it at a good church. Maybe they were absent more than they were present. There's a lot of false teachings, and they're coming out with such confidence that they know what they're talking about, and it's completely false teaching. They go, well, where is this in Scripture? No answer, silence. If you can quote a verse, you can find it. And I look up what they say and I can't find it. So, you can have confidence, but you've got to have confidence in the right thing. So that's what I want you to make sure you do. Have your confidence in Jesus and God. God created all this stuff. So you let Him, you let him lead. Whatever you're going to do, you let Him lead. If, he, if you think He wants you to go talk to somebody in some place, pray about it, and say, okay, and this is what I do. I'm going to go, I'm going to go here. With your permission, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this. I want you with me. I'm not trying to do this alone. 
and if you don't want me to do it, block it. If he's all for it, I go waltzing right in and do whatever I say I was going to do. Because whatever I was going to do, the idea, because I'm praying a lot, is coming from him. Now, if I don't get the message from him and it's the wrong thing to do, and I say I'm going to do this, and I say block me, all kinds of doors close to make sure that I can't do it. Now, I have to deal with those. So I'm encouraged to not go half-cocked off any place. Because maybe I'm going to drive someplace and do something, and I'll run out of gas on the freeway because my gas gauge was stuck, and I didn't know it. And I have, I have consequences for running off and trying to do things that I shouldn't. I'm still trying. I've just got the wrong information, and I wasn't listening. So here, make sure that I pay attention next time. I might delay an extra day or two before I do something, or a week or two, as I'm trying to get good confirmation. Hopefully there's a number of steps to lead up to it, and I can say, well, block me at this step, and he won't block me. He won't block me sometimes until the last step. But if he sees that I'm trying, he won't make me pay a big penalty for it. It's a, it's a, it's a game of friendship. We're trying to do things together. He wants to do things together. He could do everything that we're doing with him by himself. He doesn't need us. He wants to work with us. Just remember that. He wants to be our friends and work with us doing this stuff. So just have confidence. And know that if you, if you pray like I do, I'm going to do this unless you don't want me to. Please stop me, but do it gently. But if he puts up a roadblock and you go, uh, I'm going to push through that because I'm determined to do this. No. Understand, everything that happens is for our good. That can be a Bible verse too if you want to look it up. So, the people that teach you how to have positive thoughts, don't let people teach you that. Let God teach you that. Look at everything, everything that you encounter as a positive. There's something to be learned positively out of it. Maybe you have a flat tire on the freeway. The person who comes to stop you and, and fix your tire for you may be someone that needs to have a witness. The tow guy might be somebody who needs a witness. Maybe it's somebody where you're going to get towed to that needs a witness. Look at everything that's happening from God's point of view, as a positive. And understand, we cannot see from his level. If anybody here has been up in an airplane and you've taken a, a commercial flight, you're going to go to 20, 30, 40,000 feet. They're called flight levels. And, you know, east is least. I forget uh, what that actually means. Now, God, I haven't flown for so long. If you're going east, you're at, you're at the odd, and if you're at uh, if you're going west, you're at the even. It's it, it's either that or it's backwards. I forget now. So that way, everybody's got at least ten thousand feet between them, so they're not going to run into each other flying around. We've got a lot of flights in the air. Just look, pull up one of these flight trackers and get them to show you how many planes are in the air at any given time. You see one or two planes fly over a day, maybe. If you're near an airport, you might see twenty or thirty. There's hundreds and hundreds all over the country, and the world's even worse. So, they have to keep them separated. But that's the big picture. God sees the big picture. When he's at 40,000 feet, he can see everybody. We can't see people at 10,000 feet. We get above, you know, three or 4,000 feet, and everybody's, you know, ants. God can see people from two billion miles away. We don't even come close to that, to where we'd even think about trying to take over at that level. You want him to basically be calling the shots. Because we can't do that. So have confidence. If you're depressed, you're trying to run things yourself. Stop doing that. Give it to God and deal with it. 
Paul had his, I, I cut, said this to a friend of mine today, Paul had a thorn in his side. We don't know what it was. It was something that irritated him, probably a sin, and he had to deal with it all the time. We don't know what it was. Paul was a sinner. Everybody on this planet except for Jesus was a sinner. Mary was a sinner. Joseph was a sinner. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're all sinners. Moses, sinner. Everybody. Because we have a sin nature. Now, that's not an excuse, but it does mean that we each have to deal with it. We have our own cross to bear, as it said. And Paul had this thorn, and he prayed to God, Take this thorn from me, please. And the result was basically, my grace is sufficient. If I took that thorn away, your ego would probably get the best of you because of all the things that God was helping him to do. So we got to be careful. We can't let what God is doing through us affect us. I'm not doing it. God is. I can't take credit for it. God is. When I try to boast about myself sometimes, sometimes I get told by God to knock it off immediately. Sometimes it's the next day. But bottom line is, that's why I don't talk about my, my life too much. I don't like to do it because it sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not. I've had a very interesting life. But God's responsible for it. As a kid, I asked, I told him I wanted to do everything, and I have. My battery is getting low. Time to go back and charge it. I can still finish this, but I can go back and charge it. But when I brag about myself, it takes away from the image that God wants. And the image is, is that we're working for Him. Now, if we want to brag about God, we can do that all day long. But don't brag about yourself. That's why I don't. I don't put up pictures of what I've done with my last job. I can't put up a whole lot of pictures of my other work because I worked in tech and you wouldn't understand it, most of you. And even if you did, some of it I still can't release because it's still classified. Yeah. Anyhow, the bottom line is I don't need to be talking about myself. I've got a world of, of God to talk about. And I've got work to do. I don't have it in my personal, don't go crazy on me light, I don't have it in my being to be able to do a daily video. But God gives me what to say. I don't have a very good memory. I find this when I was learning scripts. It didn't do me any good to learn it a week or two or three in advance. I'd forget it by the time I was ready to perform. My best time for remembering something was 15 minutes before I went on. If I had a paragraph or two to say, I could sit down, read the paragraph or two, memorize them, go up and perform them, get done with the number of takes, because you got to sometimes do up multiple takes. But a lot of times I get by with one. Walk off the set, and it's gone. I don't remember what I said. And it's the same with this. I'll have to go back in and edit this. i got to put in my little bottom text and things like that. But I won't remember the bulk of this. Sometimes I post a, a video without a caption, without a, without a title or anything. i got to watch 10 or 15 minutes of it so I know what it's about, so I can go back in and put a caption on it, because I don't remember. I'm best that way. If I know what I'm doing, then I'll screw it up. It'll be me, and you don't want me. You want God. I used to do it for me. I did it very well early on. I wrote my scripts in advance. I edited them until I felt they were right. And then I used the teleprompter to make sure that I had them there because I couldn't remember. And I did it in a studio. I can do all that, but it's me. You don't want me. Now, me might be better than nothing, but why settle for me when you can have God? Not every word I say is from God, but the, the thought and the feeling, if I can get it flowing, is from God. Because I can't talk this much. So you've got to have the confidence. And you don't have to do it right every time. I do a video every day. Not every video gets a lot of views. Some videos barely make it. 
other videos get an enormous number of views, and I don't know what the difference is. I don't. Sometimes it's the title. Sometimes I put a title up, which is the quick thought that comes to my mind, and then I'll go back and edit it. As God will explain to me what, what's wrong with the title or the description. Can't change the video, but I can change the title or the description, and sometimes that helps. I know what it means, but sometimes I'm not clear. Here, help me. But he's got to do the speaking. He's got to feed this into me, because I don't know what to say. And I'm gracious to our God that will take the time to do that. If you try to get in to see a CEO of any company, and I've been a CEO, they don't have time for you. But God has time for everybody every instant of the time because he's omnipresent. So he's got time for you right now, and he's got something for you to do right now. So get with him and tell him you're ready. You're afraid, but you're ready. Have the confidence that God will channel through you what needs to be said. Till we meet in the clouds, which from the look of things is not very far away. I don't mean tomorrow necessarily, but it could. It's been imminent from the beginning. But I, it's got to be this year because I can't see the world going further. I'm looking for some big things to happen out of the Switzerland meeting. Keep an eye on it. And I hope you're prepped. Bless. There's our armadillo. This is the same one that I had in the beginning. He's still here foraging. I'm facing forward now. And I'm zoomed in, so let me see if I can zoom out. And then walk closer. I don't know how close I'm going to be able to get. Yeah, he sees me now. There's so many of these here, they don't have predators. With that armor back on them, they're pretty well protected. Something apparently has tried to attack them, but didn't succeed. Can you imagine spending all your day looking for food? That's what these things do all day long, looking for food. He's even coming towards me, he's confident, but he's stopping to look. Yeah, I'm talking. Okay.